tonight. It's me, Chris Pepper, host of the Lace Out podcast, going solo for the first time in, I reckon, four years because the great man, my co-host with the most, my star to his hutch, Jamie the J-Dog Wallace, is unfortunately crook and will not be joining me tonight. So it means that you're getting the pep show, going back original, old school, back to how it was back in 2018. So we're going a little bit old school, but we're keeping the format exactly the same. But everybody tuning in tonight, everybody watching this live, thank you for joining us on Lace Out's Round 17 Review. And there is a bucket load to get into. So if you're joining us for the first time ever, once again, I'm Chris Pepper, the 377-game superstar of the East Keelor Football Club and very, very, very happy 2021 Melbourne member. My co-host, Jamie Wallace, he is an absolute superstar. Like I said, he is crook. He'll be back next week. So we're shouting out, lace out love to you, big boy. Hopefully you're feeling better. The man flu has hit him um, pretty hard over the last few days. We're going to be getting into all the usual uh, usual bits and pieces. We've got the ladder. We've got the magnets. We're going to be going around the grounds, rising star, you name it. Everything will be there. So if you're joining us on the chat, love to have you. Jules, Julio, great to have you first in, my friend. And if you're listening to us again for maybe the third or fourth time this week, thank you very much because we do this show every single week because of you, because I know it's how you want your footy lace out. Normally we would get stuck into what we did on the weekend. It was quite simple. I watched the D's lose. I watched some cracking footy over the weekend, went down to the local footy, watched East Keeler unfortunately get beaten by a much better Strathmore team. Local footy is king, everybody. Get to it. You will love it. Um, And it's a lot more cost effective than the AFL. Let's be honest. It is costing a fortune with everything. Petrol, uh, kids, sport, you name it. It calls an absolute nightmare. But we're not going to worry about that because we're going to spend at least the next 45 minutes just chatting about the greatest sport in the world. Not jelly wrestling. We're talking about AFL or Australian rules football. All righty. People are on the chat. It's awesome. Charlie Keegan is up the bombers. We're going to get stuck into them because they were magnificent on the weekend. But we know we usually start this week off. We usually start our conversations off by having a look at the ladder from the previous week. Now, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen. But does anybody want to actually slot a position in the top four or the top eight? Because it's going up and down like yo-yos at the moment. No one is safe. I reckon there's 12 teams that can fit into the eight. Let's have a look at the ladder. And after the Thursday night, the thriller in the thriller in Catilla, the Cats are on top just by percentage with the D's and the Fremantle Dockers all on 48 points. That, I think, is going to be three of your top four unless something major happens with the Melbourne Football Club. We know they've got a massively challenging run home over the next number of weeks, especially. They play a number of top eight teams, so there's going to be eight-point games left, right, and center. Brisbane had a monumental stuff-up on the weekend against Essendon. Nothing against Essendon, but Brisbane should have had that one. They would have penciled that one easily. They're sitting on 44 with Carlton. And Collingwood now, who are finally looking at not just making finals, but slotting themselves into a top four spot. And nobody would have picked that at the start of the year. Sydney is sitting on 40 points. Richmond are sitting in eighth, but only by percentage to shit killed. Yes, they were back to their usual tricks. The Western Bulldogs weren't much better. The Gold Coast Suns, we're going to have a chat about Gold Coast. I've been on the Gold Coast bandwagon for quite a long time. You know that. Every time I talk about Gold Coast, how awesome are they? Well, did they absolutely love it on Saturday night? If you weren't loving footy, you wouldn't have loved that game. Then get off the podcast right now because that was an absolute belting win by a club who is, let's be honest, are playing a lot better football deeper into the season. Port Adelaide, another good win, yet it was the GWS. That's as far as it goes down. And then we've got about a three goal, three goal gap to GWS, very poor. Hawthorne were exceptional again. Essendon, your fifth win of the season. I don't understand what's going on. We'll get into that really lately. West Coast Eagles and then North Melbourne. And we know all the news that came out of today with David Noble being released. So lots of things happening with the AFL ladder. I reckon as simple as this. Anybody from Port Adelaide up can make it. 
and you're going to be seeing a lot of eight-point games. Perfect example, the Ds play Port this week. Melbourne win, slots them into that top four spot. They lose. Well, might not be top four. It's going to be probably just making the eight if they're lucky the way that they've been playing. And Port Adelaide could get a slot into the final eight now when you lose your first five. That's, you didn't think it was going to happen, but it potentially might. So that is exciting news. And that is the AFL ladder. Look at them all coming in. Tommy Rokas, good to see him back. Essen to the form team of the comp. They've won two in a row. Let's just keep let's just keep the lid on it, all right? They're the form team for maybe chopping their coach about three weeks ago, so let's just keep it to that. Uh, Benji Tate would like my poise to grab a spot. No, we don't because we don't want Collingwood because there's nothing worse than hearing Collingwood around the MCG continuously. It just gives you the shits. But Collingwood is obviously going to be good for finals football. Ninthman, yes, it could be Ninthman again. Richmond, we don't know what's going to happen with them. Uh, what else we got here? Three out of four games. Yeah, I'm, I'm three out of four. Fantastic. Awesome. You had a great win, Charlie, and then you fudged it the week later. So we don't know what Essendon are going to bring, and I'll get into them very, very shortly. So I'm going to throw this one out to the listeners, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which what they want to hear first. Do they want to hear the round the grounds with me, Chris Pepper? Do we want to get into the magnets? Do we want to get into the footy-related stuff? There's people asking me left, right, and center. If you missed the start of the show, unfortunately, Jamie, the J-Dog Wallace, ranked number nine for Iron Man in his age group many, 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 many moons ago. He's actually gone down with a severe flu and will not be able to make it. The Bombers, yes, they will shape the eight, uh, but they won't be shaping it personally. They will be assisting other teams around. So it's good to have you on. Rambo Kafari, absolute gun of a football coach he is. Uh, but he did leave me on the bench one day. I did come on after halftime and boot five, but that's another story for another day. All right, let's get into it. I reckon what we'll do is um, normally we would spin some magnets, and I think I might do that right now. So it's time to spin the magnets. And you know what? I want to start off with the good stuff because Jamie has been away, and normally we start off with the bad, but I think it's time to go in um, with the good stuff. So I reckon we might need to just get the uh, – Three votes. Three votes out. All right. First and foremost, how good was it to see sensational? How sensational was it? The Gold Coast Suns, 28 points down early into the last quarter. And it just, I had my phone off. I had to go into a, I had to go to something with the kids where the phones were off. So I only got to sit in 28 points down, shattered there goes their season. Come back half an hour later, put the phone back on, and I thought it was frozen when I saw the final score. So I had to turn it off and turn it back on again. I love the Suns. I just love everything about them. And they were right to keep Stewie Jew. The players, they bleed for him. There's so much camaraderie. The players who are there want to be at the club. The players that have gone up to the club this year, Chol and Casbolt, have been magnificent. Alice has brought in. Rouse is getting better. Ainsworth's getting better. Took, took, took. Miller is an absolute weapon, and you've still got to think we've got Ben King to come in next year as well. You've also got Lockie Weller to come back in next year as well. So they are the Cholco Suns. They are two, two, two. I just love everything about them. And if you've seen, it's been on the AFL website. There's been some video. We put it up on the Lace Out Facebook page. If you haven't had a chance, go on it. We shared a post of some video of a young Gold Coast supporter standing in the crowd, a perfect view of the kick Noah Anderson after the siren. And just the love and joy that he could see on his face, that's what footy's about. That is what it is all about. He is an absolute gun. I just love everything about what he does and what about this club is doing. And I'm really excited. And I've got my fingers crossed that they are going to be playing foals. And if they didn't choke it up a couple of weeks ago against Collingwood, they, they had that game on toast, they'd be potentially sitting right in the eight. And that's, wow. So, well, uh, Jeffrey, Powell, and King all to come back next year. What more could you ask? And, and for Richmond, it's just another another catastrophe. I just I don't think that they, one minute we're talking that they're going to be potential grand finalists and they've just fallen off the, the heap again. So I don't know about Richmond. I, I've said it for many, many weeks that they were not going to make the eight. And then I probably took that back a number of weeks ago when they had a bit of a streak. I don't think they've got too many injuries. And it's going to be tough to see them getting it from here too. So I reckon they are going to end up ninth this year, Richmond, uh, which is a real shame because 
you know, they haven't finished here for quite a while, let's be honest. All right. Let's get into the next one, Geelong. Going to talk about the Geelong game, the Melbourne versus D's. Top of the table clash, Geelong. They out Melbourne. Melbourne. That was it. They outplayed them. They were out coached and they decimated the reigning premiers. Melbourne haven't been playing good footy for the last six weeks. I know they did have those couple of wins against Brisbane. They did have that win against Adelaide as well, too, but they haven't been playing good footy. And Geelong had been set themselves up for this one and they did say it was an audit and it was a great <laughs> time for it. So, um, the Blitzarves roll on the Ds at the stoppages. So going to either uh, Petrarca or going to Oliver was an absolute genius stroke. And then making Gorn not have that easy set defense spot that he normally has, having to follow him down to the forward line. It was magnificent. So, yeah, awesome stuff. Um, great to see. I'll get into the Geelong game a little bit more. But, yeah, they were more brutal. They were harder. They kicked better. And that scoreline actually flattered. flattered. Melbourne more than anything else. It should have been close to 10 goals, not just 28 points as well. Um, now, North. I know North Melbourne have been through a lot today with uh, David Noble going down, and we'll have a chat about that a little bit later on. But it was their best game all season, and this is the level that they should be at. And if anybody saw that coming, I don't know, I don't know what happened, but you should have told the rest of us. Because if you were not a football lover, put your hand up and tell me that you were not – cheering them on in that last quarter, then get off the podcast. You don't need to be part of the Lace Out community. They were sent to everybody, come on, come on, North, they're going to do it. Could you imagine if North beat Collingwood? It would have been brilliant. But they didn't. It was just a bit of uh, inexperience. The experienced players of North, they took it out at the end. Um, and what more can you say? They did. They did. Benji Tate, I know you're probably cheering for the pies. We weren't. I can tell you that the, the balcony at the East Keeler Football Club was going nutso for Collingwood uh, to lose that game. But unfortunately, it didn't go over. And yes, Donna Germanic, we would have loved for North to win. Would it have changed what happened today? Definitely not. But it would have just shown them that, hey, a bit of belief. And hopefully they can take a bit of belief with six rounds to go into the season. The last thing I want to quickly bring up was, look, let's be honest. It wasn't bags. It wasn't bags, bags, bags. But it was handfuls, good handfuls of goals that we saw over the weekend. Nick Larkey. Now, apparently, somebody put $2,200 on Nick Larkey to kick five goals or more on the weekend, and he was paying 50 ones. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! So somebody's come out nice. Uh, Charlie Kerner had five. Harry Mackay had five. Peter Wright had five. Mitchie Lewis had five as well, too. So not bags, but we're seeing some decent scores being kicked by forwards and that's what we want and it's a question I'm going to throw to you all a little bit later on in the terms of what type of game would you like to see and I'll get into that a little bit later on but it was really good to see some bags being kicked in terms of fives we would have liked some hand there's only handfuls we would have liked some sixes some sevens we want to see an eight or a nine we haven't had one of those for quite a while so as soon as we get one of those on we'll be very very happy all right Look, everything in the world can't be fantastic. Unfortunately, somebody's going to get the Barassi treatment. Healy off, Ali Murthon. Bloody weak as piss. Okay, now this one is going to probably piss a few of my Essendon listeners off right now. The Essendon false economy. Great win by the Essendon Football Club up there in Brisbane on the weekend, and no one in this studio or listening to this is going to say anything different. Okay, second week in a row, three out of the last four. But is this just another false economy finish like their uh, end of 2021 run? Okay, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, you wanted the coach gone. You wanted Rutten to go and Clarkson was in. And now you're saying, oh, we've got him back. Look at the team. They're stronger than ever. I don't know what you want, Essendon. You teased us last year. You teased us last year and you teased us last year again. And then you've done nothing this year. Are you doing it again? Are you getting the hopes up? Okay, are you getting the hopes up for your supporters, for your everybody sponsors, and then you're going to let them down in 2022 again? I don't know. And I don't hate you because we're not you. We're premiership team, Charlie Keegan, the Ds. And you're not, all right? So I'm not comparing your team to mine. Mine will be playing finals. Yours won't be. We'll leave it at that. I just don't want you to get let down again by the false economy that they could be setting up by the way they're playing at the moment, giving you so much hope and falling away once again. We're saying that the list is maturing, is it, Rambo? 
Well, I hope so because you've got a great core of kids. But you should be winning more. I picked you to play finals this year and ain't going to happen. So in my eyes, that is, that's a bad year. I think there's other teams that should should not be playing finals and yours should be one. So that's a little bit, you've won 16 flags. Who cares? You haven't done anything for the last 22 years. Get over it, okay? Get over it. All right. The Dogs and Saints, no man's land. Where are you? All right, get your compasses out. Maybe put the GPS tracker on because you're in no man's land. We cannot find you at all. Both teams, so much promise heading into 2022 and you're just not delivering. When seasons and finals are on the line and you just disappoint, especially for St Kilda, they were on a 6-2 and two mission at the start of the year and potentially going to miss the eight. You wouldn't have picked that. And the reigning runners-up, grand finalists from last year, they have been struck down. They've still got a chance. Like I said, there are teams playing each other. Like I said, Essendon, West Coast, Hawthorne to a degree are going to be pushing these teams uh, to, to potential losses. So there, there could be a chance. But the way the dogs are playing, absolutely putrid. Absolutely putrid. Um, and they're just they are just not delivering. They're, they're, it's all down to their midfield. Too much pressure on Norton, not enough strength down back. I know they're going for Rory Lobb. That's not going to fix it. They need a lot more work around. I'm hearing things like um, play their other ruck, play sweet so English can go forward. I don't know if that's the answer. I don't know what the answer is, and if I was, I'd be down at the doggies, but I'm not, I'm not silly enough to put my hand in the ring for that. And no, I'm not going to put my hand up for the North job either. Okay, They want success, and I'm not the guy to bring it to them. Um, all right, umpiring. I think I saw the worst holding the ball decision. I reckon for the last five years minimum on Friday night. Now, we're talking about the game between St. Kilda and the – oh, I can't blank. It was uh, – Dockers. Sorry about that. The Saints and Dockers. Absolute shocker. So one of the Saints, Saints players is bursting through the middle of the ground, gets tackle. Uh, sorry, tackle. Sorry, one of the Fremantle players is coming through, gets tackled by one of the St Kilda players. Now he has had time. Don't worry about prior opportunity. He had like ten minutes of opportunity to get rid of this. Ball gets dropped. Umpire says play on. St Kilda player picks it up, takes two steps, gets tackled and gets obliterated, literally obliterated within half the time of the Fremantle guy, and it gets called dropping the ball. Go onto the AFL website, have a look at the footage. It was putrid what was happening, and that is why people are so frustrated with the game right now. Uh, That's why people don't like the game because there's no consistency. It's all down to interpretation, and they don't like it. So it's very hard. For us as football lovers to call that um, and to see that sort of thing. And, yeah, it was um, Butler from the Saints. And then he had to, to make it worse, he then got a bit of a descent and had another 50 paid against him. I think they went down and kicked a goal. So absolutely putrid on that one. But the AFL, you're only you're the only ones to blame here. So we're going we're gonna to move on from that one. And my – Jennifer Ducking. All right. Bit of a sore point, this one. Depends. If you're a Collingwood supporter, you're not going to like what I say. And if you're everybody else, you're going to like what I say. Now, we know Jack Ginevan likes to duck. Good old Daffy Duck. <laughs> quack, quack. All right. Now, we know he's been getting away with it for quite a while. He goes a bit of the Joel Salwoods where he, he, he drops to the ground, raises the arm up to get the arm from, the, uh, from the, the tackler's arm from his shoulder up to the neck. All right. But the umpiring, the way it was umpired on the weekend, I'm not getting upset for the fact of the way it was umpired. It's just, once again, the inconsistencies. It doesn't make any sense why they did it. So there was a situation where he went down, got a too high decision. Beautiful. Did literally the same thing, and the umpire paid dropping the ball against him because his prior opportunity was when he dropped to his knees and gave away uh, his opportunity then. That was his prior and just laid there. And I agree 100% that's it. 
When you get the ball, the first action should be to get rid of it. As soon as you either sidestep, put the arm out, try to evade, spin, or drop, that is your prior. And the issue is where our fans are getting frustrated is that we can see that it's prior. Anytime that they try to take on anybody, that should be paid as dropping the ball. But for whatever reason, they don't go ahead and do it, and it causes more issues than, than good. So please, for the AFL's sake, Go back and get rid of prior opportunity. If you get caught with the ball, you've got to get rid of it. And if you don't get rid of it, that's holding the ball, dropping the ball, whatever it is, all right? And if you also remember, if we go back quite a while, team, do you remember the AFL were going to stop the 360s being tackled and spinning the person 360, 720, and then not getting rid of the ball? Hasn't that fallen by the wayside quite quickly as well? Another example of rule of the week. And really quickly, it happened earlier in the week, last one, Rex Hunt's comments. Uh, I don't know if you heard or saw Rex Hunt's comments about Wayne Carey being dumped from Friday night football for Daisy Pierce, basically saying that sexism has, has come in, the woke society have come in, they've had to even it out. How dare they get rid of a champion like Wayne Carey and replace him with Daisy Pierce? No disrespect to Daisy because she's doing what she does, but getting rid of a special comments like Wayne Carey for that. I can understand where he's coming from, but it wasn't the right thing to say. We'll keep it at that. But what he did say, which is correct, is that there is more focus on the two callers, um, BT and JB, and they're making about themselves and not making about the game. And they're two that I believe have to go off the coverage because let the vision, we can see what's going on. Let the vision tell the story. You don't need to be talking the whole way through. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is around the grounds. And there, sorry. Not around the grounds. Here's spin the magnets time. All right. A couple of things that have been coming through. Uh, Joel Smith has been doing it for years, picking on a 19-year-old. You know, I don't care. Hey, if he's in the AFL system, I'll pick on if they're 19. I'll pick on them if they're 49. I'll pick on them if they're 39. I'll pick on them. I'm not picking on him. Just telling you the way it is, okay? Um, I like Daisy Pierce. I think she's better than Captain Obvious Luke Hodge. Um, and I like Richo the most out of them all. I just like the way he just has his nonchalantness about him as well too. Uh, Jules Julio, this is it, Pips. They want to go global, but they can't get the rules right. Exactly right. I don't understand why they want to push this globally. Just make out the number one sport here. There's 25 million people who could love this sport. Why don't we just focus on that? A um, couple of things. Um, holding the ball, Sam Collins in the final two minutes was utter bullshit. Yeah, we're talking about the one a couple of weeks ago, Tommy Roker, from when you lost against Collingwood. I understand that as well too. So come through. Keep sending all of your co uh, chats through. Keep sending all your questions through as well. If you have any questions for us tonight, throw them through because I've got no one to throw them at because the J-Dog isn't here. All right. I reckon it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to um, to just uh, take a moment to reflect on the great man and, and let's introduce – it's time for Around the Grounds. It's time for Around the Grounds with Laysout's number one newsbreaker, Jamie Wallace. Over to you, big fella. All righty. Now, unfortunately, like I said, J-Dog isn't here. He's crooked tonight, so I'm going to be doing it around the grounds. And look, so many little news stories. I'm going to get into all the games very, very shortly. But we just have to go over to the big story that happened today. And if you've been living under a rock, David Noble is leaving the Kangaroos. Um, 38 games since the start of 2021. Took the job over from Reece Shaw when he moved on, resulting in five wins, a draw, 32 losses. Bit of a shame to see him go. He was so well respected up there in uh, Brisbane as uh, a football administrator, uh, head of football, I think it was up there, coming down to North Melbourne. And I just think it's one of those situations where we thought at the time the shoe would fit, but as time moved on, um, it didn't. Now, whether he was old school, whether he was new school, unless there was, you were there, you weren't too sure what happened. But let's just have a look at the, the tail of the tape of what's happened to this poor bloke. 11 straight losses by more than seven goals, 14 losses consecutively. Uh, the Hunt is on for their fourth coach in three years. That's Melbourne-like. That's Richmond-like. No one's been doing that for a while. So it's going to be interesting to sort of see where this one goes. Now, this is part of the review by uh, Jeff Walsh, uh, but you have to think that there's more than the coach who has to go. Uh, on SEN Radio, they're saying that they haven't had, and this is North Melbourne, have not had their Peter Jackson moment. 
So yes, they're removing the coach, great. But does more around the club need to be totally wiped out and totally reset? And that was what the issue was with Melbourne going back to 2012 when they were at their lowest point. They got somebody totally non-related to the club to come in with the help of the AFL, which was Peter Jackson. And he pretty much just cut all the dead wood out of the club. They put in Paul Ruse. They got the off-field side of things correct in terms of the, the functionality, the structure there. And then they got the on-field things right, and then it moved on, and we obviously saw what happened in 2021. So it can turn around quickly. Unfortunately, what they've done so far is just got rid of Noble. Now, that can't be it. There has to be more because, once again, I always say the fish rots from the head, or if you get the off-field right, the on-field will pay for itself. Well, you've, you've gone the low-hanging fruit. You need to go the high-ranking high fruit here. Now, whether it's the president or whether it's the CEO, one or both of those will have to be moved on. Have to, because this club has to change fundamentally. They've had massive recruiting issue, recruiting issue, uh, problems over the years as well too. They got rid of, I think at the first, even when Noble joined the club, they got rid of 14 players, in, including Majak Dor, um, and also uh, Mason Wood. And he wasn't even at the club, so he didn't even have a say. Too many young guys, not enough experience. It's like looking at, instead of a blue and white mirror, it's a red and blue mirror. And some major changes have to occur. So that is going to happen. We know it will. We might have more news about it next week as well too. The next coach, this is the question, which avenue would you go down? Would you go down a new coach or would you go down an experienced coach? So this is my listener question for this week. If you had to pick the new coach, for North Melbourne, would you go with an experienced coach? And I'm talking about the names of Don Pike, Alistair Clarkson, Adam Simpson, Nathan Buckley, Ross Lyon. You know what you're going to get. And now I've put Nathan Buckley in there, but he's categorically said he won't do it. The rest of the names I think would have a crack if the opportunity was there. Or do you go down some of the experienced uh, assistants and names that we've been hearing for a while who have gone for senior jobs but just weren't able to or haven't yet um, taken out the big one, such as Adam Uze, Ashley Hansen, Scott Burns, Adam Kingsley, Daniel G in Syracuse. Personally, I don't think that's this one here. This one, the North Melbourne rebuild, is the one for you. It's too much for a first hopeful career coach to take on. There's too much of a risk. And unless you are offered something along the lines of a four-year contract with a massive, if we, if I get sacked clause in there, you pay me a bucket load, you wouldn't want to take it. I think they have to go with somebody experienced. I think they have to get somebody um, who is a bit tougher on them and somebody who's going to set standards. So based off that, the one I do like when I look at him, I look at Don Pike, and I mean, I think he's up. He's happy up there in Sydney. He's with his mate John Longmire. I don't, and I think he's been really good for the for the Swans this year. So I'm not going to go with him. Nathan Buckley, we've said no. Ross Lyon, I think, from a defensive mindset, would definitely get this group in shape, and I think from a standards, he would get them in shape. I think the other thing that Ross would have with this group is that if you know what Ross has done at St Kilda and he did at Fremantle, he bled the groups dry and didn't refresh and rebuild. He hasn't got that with this group. They're all young. Now, outside of Zebul and Goldstein, you really don't have anyone that would be you know, chop-worthy at the end of the year. There's a great bunch of young kids. They just need someone to show them the way. The other name I look on there is Alistair Clarkson. And I think, yes, Alistair Clarkson is a bit of a master coach, but I also think he had a list that was exceptional. I also think he won his premierships at the right time. And what I mean by the right time is he won them in 13, 14, and 15. Now, if you remember, a lot of the other lower-end clubs, normally around draft time and normally around trade time, would be getting done kids in. That didn't happen because remember the two expansion clubs came in around about that time. 
And so they couldn't get the gun kids in. And so their development stagnated for quite a number of years. So I'd say, let's say six out of the 18 teams stagnated. A lot of the other teams couldn't really improve their lists either because of what they had available. They couldn't trade anybody in. They couldn't, they didn't have draft picks either. Where Hawthorne went, when we've got a great nucleus, we're just going to pinch it what we need. We need a David Hale over here. We need a Brian Lake over here. We need a big boy McAvoy over here. And so we had the core. We had a Burgoyne over here as well too. We'll add them to our existing list. And I think that they weren't able, they were able to, I won't say pinch three, you don't pinch three flags, but I think that they were the best position during those compromised draft periods to take full advantage. And they did. So I'm looking at Alistair Clarkson and go, well, he want to go through another rebuild. I don't know. And so the last name listed here is Adam Simpson. He's a North Melbourne guy. Yep. Would he might want to come home? Yep. Ex-captain of the club. Would he want to get back? Yep. Which club's got the better future? West Coast or North? Now, if I was looking at him, I'd be going to North because West Coast are an aging list. They've had their peak times. They're, they have to go through a rebuild. Where North are at the complete other end where it's just upside with everything that they've got. So here's the name that stands out to me from the experience would be Adam Simpson. Now, whether he's willing to leave West Coast, I'm not too sure. I'm not sure. But that's the one that stands out to me. If they did have a look at the young ones, I would definitely have to go with Adam Uze. And I'd hate for that to happen because being a Melbourne guy, he has been magnificent for what he did for the Ds. Him and Choco Williams were the reasons we won the flag last year. Obviously, I could say the players had a little bit to do with it. But they were the two that drove the standards and got the structures and so forth on board. He's been behind Alistair Clarkson for many years. He's been behind uh, Goodwin for obviously another premiership there. He'd be the one in the in the in the the box seat. And obviously having a bit of a younger, a younger look at it as well, I reckon he would be the guy that would slot in nicely with them as well, too. I would hate to see it personally, being a Melbourne guy, but you've got to you've got to give people their opportunity. So if he goes for it. All the best, um, but I think it's going to be down to either uh, Adam Simpson or Adam Uze to be the coach of North moving forward as well too. So I want to hear what you think. Get to us on the Facebook page. If you're listening right now, put it in the chat. Um, I'm seeing some names coming through. Mark Williams is coming through, which is an interesting one. It hasn't been brought up all that often. Someone said, David Salt said, Kerry. Yeah, he's not coming through the North doors in a hurry. Uh, Rambo said Ross Lyon would take the Kangas to a whole new world of pain. Oh, I don't know. I think Ross has got still a lot to offer. Uh, whether he wants to go back, I think he likes what he does in the media, so I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Tory says they need a, 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 an experienced coach, and I think everybody is saying that because they don't want to just keep paying out, paying out, paying out coaches when they've got themselves so nicely financially off the field as well too. All right. Hey, you want to have a, you want to have a listen to some games? Let's talk about some games. So, um... What should we do here? I reckon it's time for us to um, have a chat about this week's games. All right. Let's have a chook. All right. Really, really quickly. Thursday night, it was Iceman versus Maverick. It was the Top Gun Challenge, the best of the best, the Ds versus the Cats, and we all know what happened. The Cats by 28 points over the Ds. They were magnificent in everything that they did uh, against Melbourne. And if you just have a look at some of the statistics from this game, they beat Melbourne up legitimately in everything that they did. They beat them up uh, from the perspective of, you know, scoring shots, 31 to 18. They were looking at inside 50s. You're looking at 66 to 15. Rebounds. Melbourne were rebounding a lot more, obviously, when the ball's going in there a lot more. Um Percentages inside 50s per score. 45% of the time when they went inside 50, they scored compared to Melbourne's 32.6. So everything around the ground, Melbourne led the hit outs. They beat Melbourne on the tackle side of things. They beat them in the disposal side of things. Um, kicked more goals. They were just, they were harder, they were faster, and they wanted it more than the Ds. I got to see uh, Tom Atkins play on the ball for the first time as an observer. He is a gun. I can't hold that back. He is an absolute gun. Dangerfield, I reckon, has been so overrated for so long. He put the words back straight in my mouth. He, he sprays his kicks left, right, and center, let's be honest. 
but he was back to his danger fuel best, Brownlow best on that um, on that time frame. Mitch Duncan, amazing. I'm talking about Blixarves. And when you have people like Stengel, uh, Hawkins and Cameron hardly kick a goal between them, and they've still got that bloke called Tom Stewart to come back in, they are primed for uh, a premiership this year. So I'm happy to have them as the favourites for this year, but we know what happens to Geelong when it comes to finals. For Melbourne, I said it a few weeks ago, the Ds are a bit of a false economy. I've mentioned that a little bit uh, earlier on with Essendon, but they have been a false economy. They are not the team that they were in 2021. They have not been playing like the team that they have been in 2021. Um, The overall just pressure that they did against Brisbane a couple of weeks ago wasn't there last week. Uh, They were outcoached. The issue with Melbourne is twofold. They don't use the width of the ground. And mind you, GM, GMHBA is not a wide ground as it is. But they don't use the width of the ground. They don't switch. And I can tell you now, watch this. Next time Stephen May kicks out a full back, don't look to the right-hand side of the screen because he's never going to kick it there. He's always going to be going to the left-hand side. And clubs are – so we need to change the way that we do things. And the forward line mix still is not working. Uh, I know Brown was all right on Friday night, but he hasn't been the answer. Fritch has been a little bit off. Uh, Cozzy hasn't been himself. Uh, Neil Bullen hasn't been himself. So just that that pressure. Sparrow as well too hasn't been what it was this time last year. So I'd rather it happen now and build to it. Hey, look, they are doing the rope and dope with everybody and deliberately played like that to see what Geelong would do. So they do it against them next one as well too. So the Ds have a lot of work to do. I still think that they'll finish top four. Um, but they're going to have to win, like they're going to have to win at least four out of the next six games to do that, and five out of those six against top eight teams. Exactly my point. All right, let's have a look at the next game, which was on the uh, Friday night. It was just another dog day afternoon slash evening. The Swans by fifty three points over the Dogs. Just when you think this mob called um, Sydney, uh, 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 I don't know what they are like. When you th- they go ahead and smash the Western Bulldogs and then lose the week before on, on, on a game that they 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 had on toast. Now it's these sort of things that don't make any sense. And the doggies, oh, I don't even know what they stand for anymore. But they were just they were just sensational. St Kilda, I mean Sydney, Isaac Heaney. I'd love him at my club. I think it'd, seventeen other clubs would love to have him there. Um, the McCartney boys down back are just brilliant. Uh, Chad Warner, he's got porn star written all over that name. And he he's, he's young. He's a gun. Papley does his thing. You know, it's very similar to the Thursday night game. Score, 13, 13 difference in, in the scoring shots. Conversion 48% to 40%. Uh, they won the clearances, the um, inside 50s. They beat them by 12. So they weren't just peppering goals. They were just constantly in, 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 in. Um, one kick to handball ratio, so they'd kick it, handball, kick it, handball, so they'd run and gun where the doggies were a lot more kicks and less handballs as well too. So I don't know what they're going to do, uh, the doggies. They're going to have to do some work off the field. Sydney just played their chip around the ground game, 99 marks to, to 62. And when they were ready to, ready to launch, they did. They're just not hungry enough and um, it's going to be a disappointing team. You've got to remember, they were up by three goals, 19 minutes to go in a grand final last year and potentially are not going to be playing finals. I think there's something in that for all of us. All righty. Can I talk about this one? Kanga, 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 Kanga. Roo, roo, boo. What did you do at the last moment? The kangaroos lose to the pies. Eight points in an absolute chiller thriller at the G. Larky was sensational. The hyphen, Davies Uniac. North supporters, is he your future captain? Rue boy, I know you're on. Is he your next captain? He is an absolute jet, uh, that young man. But they were just, Dacos, best first year player I've seen since Clayton Oliver. I'm going to say that full stop. They just keep winning. You know, the tackles are pretty much even as massively, and I'll say uh, that one was an honourable loss, an honourable loss. Tory went to the game to, to give the North, the North people a, a bit of a chat. They were sensational. You know, there was one tackle difference. Now, normally North would be smashed in the tackle count. They were better. Um, you know, everything across the board, goals were very similar. Uh, scoring shots were very similar. Conversion was similar. 
inside 50s. Like North had more inside 50s. They just couldn't convert. And I just think the experience of people like Sidebottom, um, Pendlebury at the end, were just able to slow that game enough, lead it by example. Coxie had a good game as well too. Clunked, I think it was like five cont- excuse me, five contested marks as well too. So his glasses are doing something amazing as well too. Colin would just keep winning seventh in a row. It would have been a real shame. We would have loved for North to win that just for the confidence side of things. I don't think it would have made a difference with what happened with the result today, but it would have been nice to see them get the win because we just want teams to win. We don't want to get see them get smashed every single week as well too. So, yeah, love what Davis Unicorn is doing. Um, I don't think they need to go to Tassie, to, or, uh, Salty Boy. I don't think they're going to um, – no, nah, I don't want them down there. I think they need a new club. And I'm really – and to be honest, I'm a bit sick of them just picking on North all the time as well too. I think we – can we just move on from that? Pick another club to pick on, all right? Let's pick on Richmond because they didn't make finals this year. Let's pick on West Coast because they didn't – they've done nothing this year. Why don't we Why don't we um, move Essendon? I think North have had more finals wins in the last 20 years than Essendon have had. So why don't we relocate Essendon? Yep. It could go on and on. I think we just need to give it a pause, let them go through their process. Uh, the problem is they're in a bit of a dead heartland. They're in a bit of a dead heartland. North Melbourne's not a growing area. So, yeah, they've just got to do what they've got to do. But uh, a performance like they did on the weekend was a hell of a lot better than what they've been serving up for the most out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know it is not the hot part of the season, but sun's out, the guns were out. And I'll tell you what, the sun's in a thriller over the Tigers by two points. What a game. Just whack on that last quarter. You'll see mistakes made by Richmond players you have never seen in the last four years. You know, Grimes dropping chest marks. Castagna running into open goals, taking way too much time, kicking it into the man on the mark. But the Suns, their testicular fortitude. Like Tommy Roker, I know you're part of this community and you've been on it since day one. But if you weren't Chubbs Farquaring up, if you did not have a, a bit of a riser in the shorts, my friend, when they were coming back, and when Noah Anderson slotted it after the siren, the Matt Rowell's been better. Took Miller's been sensational. It would have just, I would have, I would have loved to have been at that game because that is what football is all about. But if you have a look, smashed them in the disposal side of things. They're kicking the ball more than they're handballing, and that's how you got to play up there. It's Dewey, just boot it long. It takes a lot harder to get it back. We've seen teams up there previously. They're um. The, the ball gets like a cake of soap. It's slippery. Don't try and handle it. Go under 10's footy. Just kick it into your forward line. You saw what uh, the Chol Co Sun did at the end. He almost cost them a goal by not being able to pick it up. But go off the ground if you have to. Um, where else? Uh, they led in clearances. Uh, they led in rebound 50s. They had less inside 50s at 57 to 63. Uh, but they were, and they even had less of a conversion as well too. So they weren't, but they converted their goals. Sam Day, magnificent. I love Collins. Um, Ainsworth is just, I just love, I just love Gold Coast. I love Gold Coast. And I can't wait to see what they do next year. Richmond, they're going to rue this one for quite a while. We know that that's going to happen. But that was a game that they let slip. 28 points heading into the last quarter or into the last quarter and they let that one slip. I really hope that that just puts it in perspective. And I just want to put something also into perspective here. When you compare the pair, if we were going uh, your superannuation, the average age of the Richmond team is 26 years, 10 months. The average age of Gold Coast is 25 years and two months. But the average games is 112 to 89. Now, if you take a couple of the big names out of that, so like a, Cos- a Casbolt, uh, a Swallow, Wits, you take these ones out, it's going to drop those games even further. So for what they did and how they did it, um, amazing. Richmond had six players between 100 and 149 games. Gold Coast had four. And Richmond had six over 150 or more. Gold Coast had four. So we're talking 12 to eight players over that 100 games mark. So it just goes to show the future for what um, Gold Coast have. And I, I'm, I'm, I really hope that they pinch a goal, a pinch a, a pinch a final spot because they deserve to be there than some other clubs that are just teetering at the moment, one of those including Richmond. All righty, let's get into the next one. The Fremantle Doctors Diagnosis. 
it is that they are anchored in the top four. The Dockers over the Saints by 41 points. They just keep doing They are my team of the year. Don't worry about Geelong. Fremantle are my team of the year. They're, the way that they play, they're hungry around the ball. They The pressure, their forward pressure, they're doing what Melbourne did last year, and they're doing it better. It hasn't hit finals yet, but they are doing it well. Lobb's having his best year. Tabernard's been sensational. Brayshaw in the middle. Lockie Schultz down there. You have a look at their back line. Even their back line, like Caleb Sarong, again, Will Brody, why did Gold Coast let him go? Like it's it's these sort of things. Um, Brendan Cox has been – Ace is having his best year of football. Oh, it could almost be ever. Better than Collingwood and better than Brisbane. Griffin Logue is amazing. David Money just keeps doing what he has to do. Uh, Sean Darcy. What, why would you, Sean Darcy and Rory Lobb, want to stay there if Luke Jackson's going to come in? Because uh, three doesn't fit into two, so one of those is going to have to move on. And I don't think it's going to be Darcy, so Lobb's going to have to go somewhere. But they are just doing everything, right? Michael Frederick, just I, can't, I can't love the way Fremantle play their footy. And if there's anybody I want outside of my club to win it, I'd love Fremantle to win. Simple as that. Um, St Kilda, same same old, same old. Like just when you think that they're moving in the right direction, they take a sip, six. Um, sorry, start again. Uh, when you think they're taking a step forward, they just take a step back. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. Maxi King. In terms of what, what he did, kick two goals. Membry had two. Dan Butler had two. Good to see him get on the scoreboard a little bit. Uh, Snags Higgins had one. It was just their usual suspects again. Crouch, Hill, Steele, Zach Jones. But they just got out-pressured, out-pushed. And Fremantle, like I said, that they, they do that to teams. Um, I don't know how Collingwood got over them a few weeks ago. That was a bit of a shock. And maybe it was the hiccup that they needed to have. But they um, they just planned so much better footy. Like even the inside 50s, 52 to 45, like there's not a massive difference there. But if you have a look at the actual um, inside scoring shots, like inside 50s, two inside 50s per scoring shot. So they'd be going in, out, in, bang, in, back. They just keep the ball up their forward end and good luck getting it out. So good on you, Fremantle. Love everything about what you do right now and uh, shit killed her. You're back to normal. Now, I'd love the big fella to be here because he could talk about Rosie the Giant Slayer. Port by 55 over GWS. Connor Rosie, four goals. Power win another, sitting one game out of the eight now. Interesting game against the Ds this week, so that's going to be an absolute corker, um, and it's all over for GWS. Uh, the Gabatoir is now vegan. Essendon win by 10 points over Brisbane. That was a cracking game, back and forth all day, and it just goes to show you can tag someone. Lockie Neal got completely outplayed, outworked, outran by Jai Caldwell. Peter Wright, mate, you just got to keep doing what you do up in that four line. Best uh, set shot in the league, bar none. And that is the type of football that we expected Essendon to be playing from day dot and not in round 17 too. Um, for the Brisbane Lions, doesn't really think anything different, does it? Brisbane Lions, um, they're a bit loopy, they're a bit fruity. Uh, they can be killers and then they can be kittens the next week. They're a really interesting mob. They've got such a talented list and they should be doing more with what they've got. Um, I just wonder if they're a bit of a selfish team. I know that if you're out with COVID and I get that, but other clubs have as well. But they just lose like that too often and they don't have a, a whimper. Uh, they had kept against the D's a couple of weeks ago and it looks like they didn't have a whimper. Even though it was 10 points, uh, they should have put Essendon to the sword at their home ground and they weren't able to do it. So Brisbane have a big chance of not playing uh, top four footy this year. And I don't think that they can win it if they don't get home finals. And they need two finals to um, hold themselves in contention. So they're, they're not going to make it, I don't think, this year. And it's going to be another wasted season. Anarchy in the Avery happened. The Hawks by 32 points over the Crows. What more can you say about that guy, Mitch Lewis? Five goals sensational Hawthorne. I've picked on um, I've picked on Sam Mitchell quite a fair bit this year. Overrated. Guy can coach. And he, know, and he knows what to do. They, they just played played better footy. 379 uh, disposals to 375, so there wasn't much there. A very, very much kicking game, kicking to position, cutting the angles and, and penetrating forward. Inside 50s, 54 to 44. They just slaughtered 
Um, I just slaughtered them, slaughtered them across the ground. It's just, it was just really good to see. Um, Rory Lord, I will give you a bit of a hands up, mate. 42 disposals in a losing team. <laughs> Cannot argue with that, but Blake Harwick, Dylan Moore continues his great season. Um, I've already spoken about the great man that was Mitch Lewis. Luke Bruce kicked his couple as well to, um, was, you know, people like John Newcomb, uh, CJ, Sicily, just the, they've got a nice little nucleus there with a bit of youth coming through. So it's good to see what they've got to do. And Adelaide is a bit of a disappointment from the week before when they really pushed Melbourne. Um, yeah, they're in a bit of no man's land as well too. They've got the best fitness coach in Darren Burgess, but outside of that, it's going to be a little bit hard for um, Matthew Nick's group over the next couple of years. Last but not least, the Kennedy curse continues with Carlton by 63 points over West Coast. I actually pick West Coast to win this one. But once again, I was shown completely wrong. And Carlton, they just do what they have to do. Like, can honestly, can they win it? Can Carlton win it? Or does they have a feeling a bit like 2018 Melbourne where they really roar, but when they get to when the real work needs to be done, they might fall over at the last step? What are your thoughts, listeners? Write something on the chat or jump on the Facebook page to let us know. But I just, you know, when you've got the Twin Towers down there of Mackay and Kerno, and they're playing Hawkins and Cameron this week. I might, I might even have a go down and watch that one. They just do everything right. Like, Voss has just got that team humming. They're going to start getting their backline stars in. You can't ask for much more than that. Uh, and West Coast, uh, where West Coast, um, West Coast are. Oh, I, I'd like to see Carlton get up. I agree with you, Tory, but I think from a selfish perspective, I'd like to see Geelong win. So it just keeps that buffer between us and them. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it's well, we don't know what, and it's good to see the Carlton supporters up and about. All right, Ligon Street does never sound busier. Blues merchandise is everywhere. It's fantastic. Football's a great sport, isn't it? They're the games for the weekend. All right, quickly, quickly, quickly. Got something for you, team. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 year contracts uh, last week, I think it was. So good on to you, young fellas, securing your future. But outside of that, nothing really. Look, I could have gone through all the outer contracts, etc. It's the same ones from the week before. They still haven't signed their contracts, but when something happens, we will definitely get into it. All righty. Another one really quickly. Rising star for this week, Richmond's cult figure, Hugo Ralph Smith. The, I reckon one of the best mullets going around in football. Uh, also, sorry, Tommy Roker, I did forget about that one. Stewie Jew extended to 2024. And also, Brett Ratton has also been extended for another two years as well too. So we are, we focus on the players quite a fair bit. It's nice to hear the coaches get an extension as well too. And that's a ripper for Stewie Jew because we know how close uh, a lot of people wanted uh, Clarko to go up there and coach. But I reckon that's a great decision. And then you can see what that he means to the players after the reaction after last week. But like I said, uh, Hugo Ralph Smith is the uh, round 17 NAB rising star. He's played a variety of roles across uh, his short career, but has thrived playing as a halfback in recent times. And if you have a look, you got him on one side and you got Rioli on the other. Two that played a lot of forward lines in their first couple of years have now moved back. So it's good to see that he might have slotted in a spot. Sometimes it's easier to be having the ball coming towards you rather than going away from it. And I think a halfback line is a great place uh, to play your footy. Uh, he's, in, he's doing fantastic work. Like I said, the Tigers absolutely love him. The players love him. He's two-point loss against uh, Gold Coast on the weekend, 20 disposals, five score involvements, 430 metres gained at 85%. That is a corker. So young man, Mr. Ralph Smith, congratulations on being this week's NAB Rising Star. All right. So let's um, wrap this one up. So question of the week. I've actually got two. The first one was this. Would you want a new coach for your team or would you want a, an experienced coach if you were North Melbourne? So put your fantasy coach's hat on, experienced or new, untried. And the second one is, what would you prefer as a game? Would you like to see a tight, low-scoring contest or a fast-flowing, 
high scoring contest where it might be three or four goals difference. What would you prefer? More goals, free flowing, or highly contested but low scoring football? Tell me which one you prefer on the Facebook page, Lace Out AFL Podcast on Facebook. One week at a time, cracking games coming up this week. Uh, I think, look, there's a number of them for, for, for different reasons, but I think the game that we're all going to be looking forward to is 7.25, Carlton versus Geelong at the MCG. That's going to be the game of the week. Whoever wins is either going to lock in their top four spot or um, for Carlton, if they lose, potentially to lose and not make top four. Geelong could slide in home finals, which will be at the MCG anyway. So plenty on the line and a pride game, and that'll be another audit test for both of these teams. I think Fremantle Sydney, same time. Gee, isn't that going to be frustrating? Fremantle Sydney on one channel. Carlton Geelong, make sure you get the dual KO subscription um, or just borrow somebody's Foxtel login to see both those games. Once again, final spots on the line for both of those. Melbourne and Port, I know you're looking at the second team versus the 12th team, but the form of both those teams doesn't deserve that one. Um, Western Bulldogs and Kilda, someone can still make finals there. And maybe even North Melbourne, Richmond. Could Richmond lose to North this week? Could be even funnier if they'd beaten um, Collingwood last week. Maybe that was the entree for this week's main meal. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That has been a massive solo effort. Thank you for everybody who joined in and joined on the chat. Uh, like I said, I had to go solo tonight. I'll be back with a big fella, hopefully, in the next day for Tipped Out. We had a technical issue last week where I accidentally deleted the recording, so we decided to have a bye. But we'll get onto it this week as well too. So hopefully you'll be back. If not, it's going to be me. If you haven't subscribed after listening to this, jump on Spotify, jump on iTunes, give us a review, uh, tell everybody how awesome we are because that's why you guys tune in. Um, and more importantly, I hope your team wins. So um, I'm Chris Pepper. I'm your host. And it's Lace Out. And it's how I want your footy. And it's how you want yours. Have a great week. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of Place Out. Head over to iTunes and Spotify to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. And remember, join us every single Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, on our Facebook page with yours truly, Christopher Pepper, and the co-host with the most, Jamie Wallace, giving you your footy how you want it. Place Out.